The border war continues as Kansas comes calling against Missouri. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. The Hearn Center, Columbia, Missouri. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. And tonight, the Kansas Jayhawks in town to take on the Missouri Tigers. This is the way the starting lineups look, brought to you by GTE. Head coach Roy Williams and his Jayhawks will have Robertson and Thomas at the guards, Earl and Pierce at the forward spots, Eric Chenoweth, the big freshman, inside at center. For Pierce, uh, third in the Big 12 in scoring, an average of just over 20 per ball game. And for Norm Stewart and the Missouri Tigers, it'll be Grower, Haver, Thames White, and Harge. And for Monty Harge, a career high 20 points and 13 rebounds. And Dan, this has been a very difficult place for the Kansas Jayhawks to play in recent years. Ron, it sure has. And I think if it's going to be a difficult place for him to play this year, Monty Harge, Harge is a guy who really has to get involved in the game offensively. And I think that means that Missouri's got to make it a half court game. Get the big guy inside, make him be a factor. If Kansas can get the ball running up and down, Missouri's going to be hurting. Well, all over the United States, there are border wars and there are border wars. And we we saw Texas and Oklahoma last week. That one's always been a great one. This one right here in the Big 12 Conference, formerly the Big 8, has always been one that the packed house is uh, not the word for it. There is no room for anybody. KU wins the toss. They'll go on offense first. And Pierce Missouri almost loses it. Sorry. Missouri opens in the man-to-man, -man, Ron. Thomas against Haver. Pierce pulls up, 15-footer, swishes it. Ron, he was 8 of for 25 over his last two games on offense. Looked pretty good right there, matched up against White. Kelly Thames looks into the eyes of Lester Earl defensively. Man-to-man -man for Kansas. They're going to try to overplay, pressure the ball. White travels. White. We were in here two weeks ago uh, against Texas. We did not get to see Albert White because of an injury that he's been nursing. But finally, that ankle uh, seems to be almost 100%. Ron, he's done a great job shooting the ball from the perimeter. Pierce strong to the hoop. White will get the first foul of the night, first team foul. And this is something that's going to be a problem for Missouri. Pierce over the course of his career has shown the ability to get the ball to the basket. And for Roy Williams, that's a pretty good way to neutralize one of Missouri's big offensive guns. Get him in foul trouble. Pierce, a 72% free throw shooter. You see his numbers, almost 50% field goal, averages seven and a half rebounds. And he knocks it down. And that old expression of doing things well as a big man, he truly fits that category. He runs well, he jumps well, can shoot it inside or out. Gets them both. He's got four. And this crowd is just waiting for something to erupt, Ron. And Kansas hasn't given them any shot right at the moment, jumping out to the 4 0 lead. The trap on Grower. Almost has it stolen. Thames. Chenoweth with the rebound. Taken away by White, and he bounced it on the end line. Kansas, of course, an outstanding rebounding team. Missouri's going to have to get a few second opportunities, I think, tonight. They almost had one there. Billy Thomas inside to Earl. Pierce again. Nice job with the ball fake and Albert White. And offensive. Offensive foul inside. I was waiting to see if the call came, but Tommy O'Neill made it outside. Well, now the two guys playing that same spot for their respective teams, White and Pierce, both with an early foul. Kansas stays with a man-to-man. Paper gets it back to Thane. The lean, not there. Air ball. Here comes Robertson. And it's three-on-one break on this one. Back to Chenoweth, and he misses the layup. Ron, the big guy, I think, was worried about his feet as he was trying to catch the ball. Afraid he was going to walk. No 
Love a trap on Haper in the corner. Back to Hard. Puts up the jumper. There's your first hoop for the Tigers at the 18 minute mark. Robertson quickly to the other end. In and out, unlucky on the shot. Hit last by Hard. That's Lester oh. Earl that got it wrong. Earl touched it last. It'll be Missouri basketball. First on offense and then on defense, we've seen what kind of a presence Harge can be. Boy, Kansas' defense doing a great job, Ron, pushing Missouri a long way from the basket. Grauer with the three-pointer. Pierce will sky for the rebound for the Jayhawks. Thomas for three. That's almost automatic when he can catch and shoot like that, Ron. And boy, they just get the ball up the court so quickly in transition. Genoa, and he oh. whacked by Harge. And at 6'11", 335, you better believe Harge can whack you. Boy, look at Chenoweth, just out hustle White for the ball. This guy's seven feet tall. Harge really does blast him. What a great job to get the ball, steal it, run down the court. You know, the interesting thing, it's not that, that Monty hit him that hard as far as coming across with the arm, but he ran into the back of his leg and caused his, his wheels to collapse under him. That tailbone may feel that tomorrow. Norm Stewart's squad in a little bit of trouble right here early, Ron. They, if they get too far down, they lose one of their big advantages, which is the enthusiasm of this crowd. First two points by Chenoweth. It's a 9-2 ball game. Brower strong to the hoop. Robertson fouls him, and he'll go to the line. Possibility three-point play. Ron, I don't know that this is a particularly good play, but it is a gritty play. Just taking it in there, throwing it up, drawing the foul. Missouri needed something to happen. Grower made it happen. Converts it 9-5. Chenoweth to Thomas. And Hafer better find Thomas. Pierce. Boy, Pierce doesn't look like he's been struggling offensively. He's already got six, Ron. Six points, six of the 11. Almost to play the first three and a half minutes of this one. Ron, you know, if, if I was a Missouri fan, I'd be a little bit concerned because this guy right here, Paul Pierce, really looks smooth this evening smooth on offense really looks aggressive on defense he could have a big night 20 second timeout called by norm stewart norm wanting to make sure that this one that they keep contact with this team from uh, lawrence because if that were to get out of control early as dan said they don't have the weapons that they had last year to come back and send it into double overtime one of the problems I think the Tigers have had this year, Ron, is consistently scoring points. They've gone through some periods where they haven't shot the ball very well. On the season, as a team, they're only shooting 42% from the field. And one thing that you can't afford to do against a team like Kansas is have long droughts where you don't score points because you know Kansas is going to continue to attack. Pay for to pull the trigger. Is white and they trap on him immediately inside the Thames and he lost it. Plenty of time on the shot clock. 17 and now with 16. Into Harge against Chenoweth and he can't get it to go. Chenoweth battles for the rebound. And the KU basketball. Thames stepped out of bounds. That's a shot that Harge is going to have to convert, Ron. Missouri going to try very hard to get the ball down inside to Harge. He's simply going to have to convert that one. Billy Thomas for three. 
Chenoweth, who has had a heck of a ball game so far, with another rebound. Lester Earl with a turnaround. First two for Lester. That's great ball movement by Kansas, but they get a second chance opportunity and they convert. Albert White. Oh my. Paper tries to get it away. White comes up with it somehow, and it's blocked by Thomas. Pierce lost it to Grower. Kelly Thames blocking foul. And Pierce can't believe that because that's two fouls on him. He thought he was set. Chenoweth with four rebounds early. Robertson, Gregory, Earl, Bradford, and Pugh. Those are the five of the four now for KU. Lee Grower, Thames, Woods, and Decker. The five of the four for the Missouri Tigers. Tigers only shooting two of eight here in the early going. They're really looking for some offense. Lee has done a nice job scoring 14 points a game off the bench. Pugh. Couldn't get the shot to work, and he has it taken away by Tyrone Lee. Lee, you remember, lit it up two Mondays ago here against Texas, and that's going to be a reach in. Ron, Missouri doing a great job moving the ball, and when you move the ball effectively, you help your guys inside if they continue to battle for position, and that's what Decker does. Pew called for coming over the back, but that was a good sequence by Missouri, moving the ball effectively on offense. That's the first foul on Pew in the 14th foul, and here's the almost steal and Grower. Great hustle. Three on one, Thames with the jumper. Too hard off the back iron, and Thames will score it. Give the assist to Grower. Grower ought to get a couple assists for that one. Saving the ball, recovering, getting it to Thames. Robertson brings the ball up. The reason for the booze, of course, he is from St. Charles, Missouri, and they resent the fact that he plays for their arch rival, the Kansas Jayhawks. So you're here, you'll hear a boo every time Robertson handles the ball tonight. Grower's done a great job keeping pressure on Robertson. Shot clock is under 10. Robertson suspends, can't get it to go, and as they battle for it, Gregory takes it away and he'll score. First two for Gregory. That was a tougher play for Kenny Gregory than you might think. He had to be careful he didn't trip over Kelly Thames, concentrate on picking up the ball. Kenny, of course, a freshman out of Columbus, Missouri, had a scoring slump early in the year, now averaging almost nine a game. Don't want to stand around on offense if you're the Missouri Tigers, Ron. You've got to keep that defense moving. Try to get them out of position. The other thing that Norm Stewart's ball club cannot do is Lee goes up with a shot and is well off the mark. And Decker on the rebound pushed off his first foul. The, the thing that Missouri can ill afford to do is last year they came from behind, took it to overtime and then double overtime, but they don't have the firepower this year that they had last year. 
Ron I would agree with that here you see Paul Pierce coming back in the game he's two for two from the field he's made two free throws has a couple of rebounds but to see those two fouls are a very important number for him. And you have to have a feeling that, that Norm Stewart will try to take the ball in a situation so that he works on trying to get that third foul. I think that's one of the reasons why he's got White back in the game. White at six feet five, about 240 pounds, is a guy who can play effectively inside. Well, Decker headed toward the bench, and uh, now he's sitting on the, the waiting line. He's about to come back in. McGrath gets it to Chenoweth, not there. Pearson the follow, and Monty Harge comes away with the rebound. Dibby Ray. Oh, you don't want to give Harge the ball there. Gee, they're fortunate they didn't lose it. Either turnover by Walker, just by giving it up. You're right. That's like a freight train. It's hard to get it stopped. Wow. Pierce went after the ball, took a chance. Three pointer off the mark. And here comes McGrath, KU with a three on two break, and Gregory at the other end, and a follow by Pugh. First two. Just CJ Pugh back from that injury to his foot. Stress fracture. Missed almost seven weeks, Ron, but he's back now, and you can see, like all those Kansas big guys, really runs the court. Lob pass to Woods. He was lucky that he got that one, and McGrath almost took it away. Eleven forty left until halftime. Gregory misses on the shot, but Q is right there with the follow. We'll be right back. Seventeen to nine, our score with uh, just over eleven minutes left to play in his opening half. And as we do a little uh, recap here, since we joined late, fifty percent for uh, KU, three of twelve for Missouri. They got to pick that one up and uh, rebounding ten five. The numbers right now. You'd expect Kansas to rebound the ball very well. We mentioned Missouri on the season, not shooting it really well, just over forty percent as a team. And if they're going to stay in this game, they have to be able to put points on the board. Credit to Kansas defense; they've done a great job keeping the pressure on Missouri. Jimmy Ray working against McGrath. Here they come again with the double team. White drives it strong into the lane. I think Chenoweth got him out on the perimeter, but that's one of the White skills, Ron. He's very strong. He's pretty athletic. He dribbles the ball into lane. He's got the power to get it up on the board. I think they're going to call it on uh, McGrath. Okay, well, somebody reached in and grabbed him, but. First one out of him, and it's a 15 foul. You can't arm tackle him out there. You got to get him around the leg. White is 68 percent three point. White heads down the lane, and McGrath comes over and takes a swipe at it, a whack at it. <laughs> and there, see, he does take him around the legs, but it's too late, Ron. He's already through the hole and he's got the yard. Gets it. So the 57 percent free throw shooter. Uh, does very well for himself and his team. It's now a six point margin. And Pierce loses it out of bounds, looking to see where he was going to move with it before he caught it. Ray LaFrance, the doctors have cleared him, so to speak, but they still say there was a slight problem. I mean, a chance that you would take, and Roy says it's going to be a week. So the only way he'll play is if. They only have four people left, and everyone else is fouled out. They're not going to take a chance on just one ball game. Roy also said that the French, being such a competitor, wants to play so badly, he's driving Roy nuts trying to let him play. He said Jacques was tough last year, but nothing compared to what Rafe has been like. <laughs> White for three, switches it. I told you, he shoots the three better than he does the three. He's got five. All of a sudden, the turnover by Ray, and we got a one-point ball game. <laughs> Billy Thomas waits to check back in the lineup for KU. And the man. Pierce, way off the mark, couldn't get it. Oh, stolen what a great by Chenoweth. Play. 
And Chenoweth is going to dribble on down, get it to Gregory, and with the left hand, Gregory scores. Gregory now with four. Pretty good idea to try to get it inside to Harge, but they got to do a better job passing the ball than that run. Look what KU just did, a 1-3-1, one, one, aren't they? That's correct. Gone to his own, so he earned it from the outside because the outside shooting has gotten them back in the game, Dan. Pierce for three. Boy, Chenoweth's had a great early part of the game rebound of the ball run. He really has. Ray will get the carom and throw it right back to KU. Q with the good hustle and the dish to Pierce. And that foul is going to be on Monty Harge. Ron, that's the kind of thing that's got to drive Norm Stewart crazy. Harge picks up his second foul. D.B. Ray had that ball but fumbled it and then tried to get it back into Decker, but Pugh stepped in front of it. This is a great pass, and Pierce always going to the basket, and Harge goes and likes to try to block the shot. And when he bounces off Pierce, it's a foul on Harge. Chenoweth has already got six rebounds in the early going of this ball game, and we have uh, just about played 11 minutes. And Chenoweth very nearly got another one there. Yeah, I talked to Matt Doherty about him this morning, and he said because he's a freshman, he still has his peaks and valleys. The boys, his peaks are getting bigger every time, <laughs> and he really has that self-assuredness, don't you think? Oh, I think so, Ron. He's going to be a tremendous player. And now in the 1-3-1 zone. Grauer. Chenoweth with rebound number seven. Quickly out to Billy Thomas, but Hafer had done a nice job of getting back, and Hafer stripped him of the ball. It'll stay with the Jayhawks. Good intensity by Missouri on the defensive end. Hafer does a great job moving his feet, then reaches that hand in there and slaps the ball away, but he made that play with his feet, getting in front of Thomas, forcing him to stop and raise up to try for the shot. Knocked away, and here's the turnover. Tate Decker got the slap away and right with the gun. Boy, talk about unlucky. Chenoweth had to do everything but go down. Billy Thomas on the follow, and his won't stay. Pierce saves it. Boy, Ron, you cannot give Kansas this many opportunities. Great point. Great point. Billy Thomas just inside the three-point line, swishes it, and Billy now has five. This is a team that shoots almost 50%. You give them three cracks at it, you figure they're going to get one. You know, both teams, though, have shown great second effort, saving balls out of bounds and what have you. Harge missed the layup. Ron, I think the pace of this game is pretty tough for Monty Harge. Offense, Billy Thomas. You know, when that's a ball, Roy is doubly upset because you got a two-on-one break. You don't have to rush it. 23-18. White turns on this crowd here at the Hearn Center. Well, the fun things about playing the, the great conference rivalries, and particularly one like this one, Missouri and KU, is the crowd is absolutely just wild. And the game has been at a pretty wild pace, Ron. A lot of running up and down. And I think that is the reason Monty Harge has missed a couple close ones because I think he's tired from all this running up and down. You know, somebody else you have to keep an eye on is White because White with that ankle, he's not 100% and he's not in game shape as yet. Now, if he's not, he doesn't have to go too long in a game like this before he knows it. That's for sure. Thames works again. Lester Earl puts it up strong and scores. Wow, impressive move. Six for him. 
where the Kansas just runs right back at you, gets the ball quickly into the offensive zone. Missouri really doing a nice job being aggressive on the defensive end. Robertson for three, got it. He had 15 points in their seven point win on Saturday. Yeah, he really had an outstanding game. Chenoweth loses it, goes right back to Harge, but he doesn't take it up and shoot. Does misses Chenoweth with rebound number eight. Oh, let's see what they call there. It's the offensive foul, the third foul. Great defensive play by Kelly Thane. That's a play where Pierce has to understand he's got two fouls and he can't take it to the basket in that situation. He's got to shoot the jump shot. That's a great pass by Robertson, but Thames gets over there. That's a move where you may argue whether that's a charge or a block or whatever, Ron, but if you get two fouls, you can't take the risk if you're Paul Pierce. You're right. I think what Roy is claiming on the sideline was Pierce was a lot more set on his second foul than Thames was on that one. And he got both of them. Three pointer on the way. Count it. Now Parker gets into the fray. Johnny Parker, the freshman out of Webster Groves, Missouri. Boy, Hart is just really banging on Chenoweth. Lester Earl lost it. He loses it again. Nice hustle by Grau. Robertson comes away with it. Two on two on the break. And he'll take it all the way. And there is foul number three on Monty Harge. And you're right. This pace is totally out of his league. Harge just cannot get his feet set. He turns one way and then the other. And then he just swats down at the ball. There's no way that an official cannot call that foul. A guy 6'11", you'd like to see him get turned and go for the block. But Harge just couldn't do that. Yeah, there, there are not a lot of, not a lot of pirouettes of a 335-pound <laughs> body. Well, Ron, there may be a couple, but I don't think they can be done with the speed necessary to do them in this game. So Harge goes to the bench with his third foul. Robertson with his fifth point. And that'll be interesting to see how hard being out of the game will affect things, Ron. Decker can obviously run better. He's a better athlete, but Harge with that power may be sorely missed. Kansas stays in the zone. Plenty of time on the shot clock. You've got to get the ball in the zone, make it collapse, get it back out. Shot clock now under 10. Brower looks up, realizes, got to get something started. Got to penetrate the zone. Thames feeds it to Tate Decker, has it stolen by Robertson. Robertson for three, and that oh, may my. silence some of these boos every time he touches the ball now. He all of a sudden has eight points. And he's buried two big three-pointers. An eight-point KU lead. Deep in the corner, not there. Good Thomas. block out. Yep, sure was. He had Thames right on his backside. Thames loses it out of bounds. Lester Earl knocked it into him. Robertson sees an opening because Grauer was back underneath the basket trying to prevent the pass inside, and Robertson recognizes it and buries it. Chenoweth will get a break. And TJ Pugh will come in replacing him. Eight rebounds for Chenoweth, two points. Boy, has he ever contributed early. Three and a long one. And Billy Thomas, nothing but just the court and then the floor. Wow. Ron, and just like that, it's an 11 point game. Boy, Robertson, along with Thomas, just putting a dagger in the heart of Missouri, who had a great run to bring it back to within three. 
There's a foul called against Kansas. Missouri, they have not played poorly defensively. Kansas has 34 points, but Missouri's defense has been very aggressive. Missouri's problem is they haven't been able to score consistently. They're in another one of these little droughts. Mick Bradford with his first foul, but it's the eighth team foul against KU. Ron, and you think about what Kansas is playing without right at the moment. You know, those guys that graduated last year without LaFrance, now without Pierce. And they're still ahead in the game by 10. Hafer with his first two points of the night. And boy, those were big. They got to keep pace as we hit this last four minutes. They can't go into the locker room down by 10, 12, 14 points because uh, that would be a world of hurt for Missouri. They need a little offensive spurt of their own. Stream by Lester Earl, and I'm telling you, Billy Thomas, if I, I've never seen a kid any hotter, he's got 10. Wow. I mean, 11 point game, and all of a sudden the air has gone out of this crowd. So has the noise. Missouri really struggling offensively against this zone. They haven't been able to score inside. Hayford started the three, got it cocked. Thought better of it. Grower for three. That yeah. was an NBA three. Well, he ought to get a four or five for that. That was a long, what long, long shot. Six points now for Grower. The lob inside, and not a smart play as the lob pass was thrown into traffic. And there's a timeout. 3:09 remaining in the opening half, and Billy Thomas has been the man in the first half for KU. Six to 28 our score what you're going to point out here Kelly Thames who you can see there highlighted on your screen he's guarding Lester Earl now watch his number three Lester Earl sets the screen Thames does not come out to help until very late he didn't tell Hafer the screen was there he didn't come out to help and as a result Billy Thomas gets a three point basket well it's an eight point ball game a couple of numbers of interest in turnovers very high for KU at nine Missouri with only four but in rebounds KU 22 to eight the difference that lob pass well off the mark there white will pull up he'll bury the jumper first two points for him Ron and now we get a foul on Lester Earl so Kansas has turned it over once again. Well, coming up on the courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report, Carl Ravitch and Digger Phelps. UConn at St. John's, also Digger in the Big 12, and NBA Update, that and more coming up. By the way, I, just a moment ago I said White, it was Woods who scored the hoop. It's the first two for him. John, the junior out of uh, McKinney, Texas. You look at those turnovers, 11 and 4. But the rebounding is what has uh, kept KB well in front of this one. Ron, sometimes if you play at the case at the pace that Kansas has tried to play today, you're going to throw the ball out the door sometimes. I don't think they've had any real bad turnovers. They've turned the ball over while they're trying to force the tempo. Kelly Thames with his eighth point, and it pulls it back to a four-point ball game. Missouri's done a nice job keeping the ball out of the interior. The inside guys for Kansas have not scored effectively. Robertson left alone, a three, can't get it. Three pointer not there. Tip out of bounds and not saved. That's Kelly Thames going over the press table. That's a great job of hustle. Kelly was unable to save it. Good catch over there. If you're Missouri now, you want to take up or take advantage of opportunities. That shot a little too quick. Thames not able to save it, but does pretty well getting up over the press table. And receives a well-deserved ovation from the student section here at the Hearn Center in Columbia. 
One of the problems when Kansas pushes the pace like this, sometimes the opposition gets down the court and shoots a little too quickly. Woods that time took the shot before he really got set, missed it badly. Chenoweth back on the lineup and he handles outside. Now the real match mismatch with Chenoweth in the ballgame. Hafer with the foul as Billy Thomas tried to take it up. It's the first on him and the 16 foul on Missouri. Ron, you've got a couple mismatches inside because Chenoweth is going against Thames and he's got a substantial height advantage there, five, six inches. Here Thames is trying to keep up with Chenoweth and you can see on your screen the difference in height. Chenoweth much, much taller, but Albert White is also matched up against Pew and there's a four or five inch height advantage right there. So maybe Kansas will be able to get the ball inside more effectively than they've been able to do earlier in the game. Billy Thomas a 77 percent free throw shooter scored his 1000th point on Saturday in a game against K-State and he misses them both. At the other end Wood has it blocked by Chenoweth. Just because you get the ball down the court quickly and can get yourself in position for a close shot Ron doesn't necessarily mean it's a good shot. There are four blue shirts and Chenoweth makes the easy block. White with the turnaround. White now has nine. Talked about his post up ability. He sure did it there. See if they go inside. Robertson for three. Oh, those are three big three point baskets. He's got 11 and uh, Ron, look at everybody sit down. He hits that three and everybody sits down. Well, it's a five point margin. We're about to go under one minute left until intermission here in this uh, 1998 matchup between KU at Missouri. White gets it to Thames. Kelly is now with double figures. Thames with 10. What a great attack inside. Great pass. White is banging on Pew inside, keeping him from getting position. Thomas for three. Gregory with the follow. There's those rebounds you're talking about, Ron. Gregory now with six points. Start to say, and that's a, really a very quiet six, but boy, are they important when you look at the scoreboard and his team with a five point lead. I'll tell you, both of these teams, as they set it up down here on offense, both teams are really gasping for air. This has been a very hard paced game. <laughs> it has been a quick pace, and I think Missouri. Particularly if they can get a basket here has to feel pretty comfortable with where they are. Paper. Not there. Robertson with the rebound gets the shot away and that is <laughs> that, that thing almost went in. We are <laughs> at halftime <laughs> with our score Kansas 41 and Missouri 36. Scoring a halftime 41 36. The Jayhawks of Kansas on top of the two big differences in this game, Dan Bonner. 25 to 11. Kansas is out rebounded Missouri. And Ryan Robertson, the young man from St. Charles, Missouri, they booed him, but he's put a, a stake in their heart. Every time he's touched the ball, they boo here, but Ryan Robertson hasn't been intimidated. Ron, he's had an outstanding first half. Three three point baskets, all coming at seemingly critical times right in the course of Missouri rallies. And Robertson hasn't just shot the three. He's got a couple of assists. He's got a steal. He's done a nice job leading this Kansas team at a very quick pace, but he's only got two turnovers. 50% for the Jayhawks in the first half, 39% for Missouri. At the free throw line, it's helped them keep pace. Missouri is perfect, but there you see the rebounding numbers. High amount of turnovers, but still the rebounds, that's been the difference. And I think the rebounds sort of evens out with those turnovers Kansas is going to turn the ball over some when they're running up and down the court they have set a pace that has been hard for Missouri to maintain Monty Harge I think got in foul trouble because of the pace of the game the first half went much according to what happened last year in the game uh, Pierce with early foul trouble one point game at halftime KU led that one tonight they lead by five 
Kansas starts the second half in the man-to-man -man defense. The zone defense was extremely effective for them, but there Chenoweth is the turnover. causes the turnover. Yes, knocks it away. And oh. then Robertson loses it and regains it. Took it away from Grauer. Missouri in the man-to-man. -man. Looks like they're trying to get Lester Earl involved, and Robertson buries another one. And that's where Kansas has been most effective. Lester Earl in the first half. Only scored two points. Chenoweth only scored two points. So the, the big guys inside, the interior people, really not able to produce very much. Chenoweth, though, with eight rebounds in the first half. It's the finger roll by Grauer. And good heavens, how did the little guy get it up and over? He's got eight points. Grauer has played very, very aggressively. Lester Earl. Back to Robertson. Pearson after that quick start. Went to the bench in foul trouble. Pierce had eight in the first half. Another there. Thomas, the switch. Thames goes on him. Thames does a much better job stepping up. You remember in the first half, we showed that replay where he didn't step up, and Thomas got a three. Pierce. Tough shot. Yep, Thames rebound. Albert White. 11 points for him. And here comes Pierce. You know, Ron, Pierce lost it out of bounds because I think he was worried about White maybe getting in position to draw the charge. That would have been four had he gotten it. Thames at the other end, blocked by Chenoweth. That's two blocks for him. You know, Chenoweth, that gives him 44 for the year. Missouri only has as a team 36. Well, Chenoweth did a nice job standing behind Earl, able to get that block. White misses on the shot. That's Billy Thomas rebounding. Lester Earl at the other end, and he got hammered by Harge. And Harge. Well, let's see who they're going to call it on. If it is on Monty, it's four. Uh, well, I'm not going to call it on him. It's on uh, Albert White. Earl didn't catch the ball cleanly, and that allowed Harge to get there and make the block. And you can see Chenoweth scrambling. I don't know how they got White. <laughs> that looked like Hafer, who was all over him. Well, they both had fours, just got the wrong one. Got 4-4 four, four instead of 2-4. Pierce. Well, Chenoweth let it go as Thomas cut in front of him, and he clearly had the rebound. Ron Pierce at the start of the second half doesn't look nearly as smooth as he did at the start of the game. Yes, the start of the second half doesn't look nearly as smooth as he did at the start of the game. Tate Becker off the mark, Chenoweth. He is now in double figures. Ten rebounds for Chenoweth in the game. Billy Thomas at the other end pulls the trigger. Well, here we have this real quick pace, but nobody's scoring buckets. Chenoweth blocked by Monty Harge. Wow, Harge is 335 pounds. It's hard to get around him. Well, at that time, that was... <laughs> He hit Robertson with a moving streak, and Ryan was smart enough to dodge it. <laughs> Shot clock about to go under 10. Let's see if White tries to take two. White scores it. Robertson tried to draw the charge, but Pierce can't afford to be overly aggressive on defense. That's a good job by Missouri to take advantage. Two-point ball game. 13 points for Albert White. Chenoweth against Harge, lost the handle, and Pugh saves it for KU. And as hot as Pierce was in the first half, he's that cold in the second half. White. First tie in the game since it was 0-0, Dan. Got Tate Decker, Decker. Mm -hmm. holding T.J. Pugh. White has is doing a super job. We said he needed to have a big offensive game, and he certainly come out hot in the second half. Transfer from Michigan really having an impact on this team and this game tonight. Tate Decker with his second foul. That's the second Missouri foul in this half. Chenoweth. Misses Pew with the tip and it wouldn't go. They still can't get anything inside, Ron.
And Missouri's been able to play pretty effectively against the Kansas man-to-man -man here in the second half. First points for Monty Hard. Missouri leads, first time. And Pugh just picked up a charge on Decker. The border war continues. Missouri with the two-point lead against Kansas, the first Missouri lead of the game, and Monty Harge against Eric Chenoweth inside. This is the men against the boys in here. Harge just holds him off, pushes him away, powers it to the basket. Wow. Danny. Well, not there. Sorry, my microphone went away there for a moment. Look at the numbers. One of nine for KU shooting in the second handful. Five of eight for Missouri. And here Kansas goes back to the 1-3-1 zone against which Missouri struggled in the first half. You know that the Tigers talked about this at halftime. Let's see what they came up with. Boy, they just ran Kansas right out of that man-to-man. -man Boy, they did. Becker dribbled it off his own leg. And that wasn't part of Norm Stewart's plan, I can guarantee you. And again, the Missouri inside defense has really kept the ball away from Chenoweth and Pugh, an offensive scoring position. Robertson. He has been such a factor offensively tonight. You know, without him, they'd be in deep trouble. Let me tell you, so he's got 16. If I were this crowd, I'd reverse it. I'd cheer every time he had the ball instead of booing. I think they'd chapped him. <laughs> Good heavens, what, what a ball game. Tied at 46. Paper nice dishes pass. for White. Chenoweth. There's just nothing doing inside. Great interior defense by Missouri. Kansas back to the man to man. See if they try to get it to White against Pierce. Wyatt against Chenoweth. He blocks it, and Chenoweth comes away with it and loses it out of bounds. White does a nice job drawing the defense, faking the pass, or faking the shot, and then he gets it right back. That's a great play from Hafer. You get the defense running at you, you fake the shot, and you'll get an open passing lane. Chenoweth heads to the bench to get a breather at the 13.48 mark. White on the dish, throws it right to Robertson. His foot was on the line, so it's only a two if it goes. And Lester Earl skies for the rebound. They need some output from him offensively. Pierce off the mark. Poor Pierce is really, really struggling. Roy Williams claiming that he got hit on that play. And that's an offensive foul and growl. Ron, this is a point where Missouri, they're playing really well offensively, but they don't want to get in a great big hurry. Robertson gets position and Grauer just runs him over. Robertson saluting himself for taking the charge. Pierce fouled by White. Well, we talked about the border war. As White picks up his third last year, KU number one, they were 22 and 0. They lost in double overtime. The year before, KU ranked number three. They're upset. Three years ago, Kansas won it 102 98 or lost. Yeah, Missouri lost it. And uh, then four years ago, KU upset 79 67. And the Jayhawks were ranked number three at that time. Boy, Pierce is really struggling. I don't know that I've ever seen Paul Pierce struggle this badly. Tate Decker goes out of the ball game, and Tyrone Lee comes in. Pierce did pick up a third foul against White, however. 
You know Lee is the man who came off the bench against Texas two weeks ago and had 27 points. And I imagine that Norm Stewart is hoping that he will ignite them here in the second half because he was almost non existent in the first half. Ronnie hardly played in the first mm -hmm. half. Only played two minutes two in the minutes, first didn't half. Didn't score. Did not figure in the ball game at all. About to go under 13 minutes to play in what has been a very rapid affair. Well, it's been a fun game, Ron. Guys running up and down, making plays. Grower. Boy, that was a close pass. Boy, White trying to post up inside against Pew. Thames offensive foul. Pew came over and got in front of him, and it's the first foul on him. Pew reacted very well to that. Pew cut. Watch Pew cut off White, and then as the dribbler comes by, Pew getting over in position to help. That is how you play post defense. Nice job by Pew. One point Missouri lead. Robertson the nice pass inside to T.J. Pugh and all of a sudden the youngster from Omaha is coming up big. White's trying to guard him inside. We talked about that mismatch in the first half. Missouri or excuse me Kansas not able to take advantage of it in the first half but they did there with a good inside screen. Twenty second timeout called by Norm Story. T.J. a junior out of Omaha former Mr. Basketball in that state averages five points a game and of course has had the stress fracture something that has been a problem with him he had it in high school as well about three different times but uh, he has proven that his junior status now that he is doing well with the mind not only physically and he's really helped his team right at the moment even though Chenoweth is out of the game Missouri with a very small lineup in there with Woods Basically, their their front line consists of Woods, White, and Thames. Thames at six seven, the tallest. They're back to the zone. White. There's an answer for the zone. Twenty points for Albert White. Now Earl trying to go inside against White. Remember, White's got the three fouls. Let's see if Kansas goes after him. Pierce looking desperately inside, but he can't get it to him. Gregory has it taken away by Woods, and a foul called on Gregory. Outstanding defense by Missouri. White took a risk, Ron, but it was a good one. He came out there and caused Gregory to turn back into the defense. Tigers by two as we go to the break. 11.56 left. Look at the shooting difference. KU 50% of the first half are only 3 of 13 in the second half. And for Missouri, 7 of 11 in the second half. And here comes Kansas with some pressure now, trying to change things, and Grower immediately throws it away. Norm just looked up. He threw it 10 feet over Norm's head. <laughs> <laughs> Norm is even laughing about it. He's saying Monty Hart's on top of Monty Hart's couldn't have caught that pass. <laughs> oh, my. Pierce, they set him up for the three. He is off again. He's got 0 for the second half, isn't he? He sure is. He has not made a basket in the second half. He's made one free throw. Albert White. Works it in, can't get it to go. Lester Earl with the rebound. White, on the other hand, has had an outstanding second half. Here's the Missouri man to man defense again. Lester Earl thought better of it. They go back, and Kelly Thames causes the turnover. Ron, they just can't get anything inside. It's a great job by Missouri with their interior defense. Kansas stays in the man-to-man. -man. Nice job by Thames. Missed the short jumper. Boy, he's got to convert that, Ron. He did such a great job getting position inside. They are staring that inside down, and Pierce will take it strong to the rack and score. He now has 11. First basket of the second half for Pierce. 
But he's not a guy to get easily discouraged by an offensive drought, Ron. White for three. T.J. Pugh, good job of blocking off White after he made the shot. No follow there. And when a shooter hits it after he's had a drought, he says, give me more water. What a great job by Pierce, though, to not settle for the jump shot, to get that first basket going to the goal and then taking the jump shot. Nice job. Two-point lead by the Jayhawks. Lee scores and a chance for a three-point opportunity. Pierce, we mentioned struggling in the second half, just beats Lee to the basket. Nobody steps in front. Pierce able to get it all the way to the goal. That's basket number one. Now a little bit of confidence for Pierce. He takes it in with the pull-up jump shot. Lee, however, who we mentioned didn't play very much in the first half, makes the aggressive move there and stops a little Kansas run. Ray LaFrance having to look on from the sideline. You see the the cast still there. That is not, it's only a temporary. And uh, could play if they were really pressed. But his head coach said, nope, we're not going to do that. They, it'll be next weekend. They don't want to take that chance. Ron, you can really see how Kansas misses LaFrance. LaFrance really stretches your perimeter D or your interior defense because he can shoot that jump shot. There's no jump shooters out here among Kansas inside guys. C.B. McGrath in the ball game. Lee's going to pick up the foul. Or is it? No. That foul's called against Bradford. The old hook. Trying to get position inside. Lee struggling on the offensive end. Bradford wraps his arm around him. That's an interesting little sequence there. I think Bradford grabbed him by the leg because Lee was pushing him toward the baseline. Bradford with two fouls. Lee misses the dunk. Thames on the follow too hard. Hard can't get it to go. And the foul, I believe, on Chittable. Too hard and too large. First foul on Chenoweth. It's the fifth team foul against KU here in the second half. Haven't seen very many flurries by Missouri on the offensive boards. Harge now with five. Dave Libby, one of the officials, is visiting with Norm Stewart. Tom O'Neill is the referee tonight. Ted Hillary is the other umpire. Oh, oh my goodness. He would have missed the Missouri River with that shot. <laughs> <laughs> a wind shear. All of a sudden, oh, a my wind goodness. Shear. That shot should have been in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Thomas not there. Chenoweth got banged very hard by Lee, I believe. Yep. Lee picks up his first foul. Chenoweth so active, just nobody blocks him out. Chenoweth takes two steps, and when a seven-foot guy gets two steps to run at the basket, he's in pretty good shape for a rebound. Chenoweth, by the way, 11 rebounds now. And a man from Missouri. Billy Thomas takes one dribble inside the line. Very unlucky as it rattled and came back out. D.B. Ray will push it up. Hafer head to three, thought better of it. Harge against Chenoweth. Thomas slapped the ball, but Harge with so much power got it up there anyway. McGrath all the way to the other end, not there. Robertson misses, and Harge on the rebound. Offensive foul. Needless to say, Norm isn't happy about that, and Tom O'Neill is not happy about something over at the scorer's table. Ron Norm is not happy with the call, and now that's, the, a, technical. that's a technical foul. Norm's out of the coach's box, and I think that's why they called the technical.
He called the technical foul, I think, because Norm was out of the coach's box. What Norm is saying, one of his players was injured and was holding his arm, and that that's who he was going out to check on. Ron, I think that there's a little bit going on here that the television audience hasn't seen. Tom O'Neill, who called the technical foul, was extremely upset by something that was going on over at the scorer's table. It's almost like the officials, the official scorer, the timekeeper, somebody over there said something after that last foul call. Tom O'Neill went over there, was really upset. And then people started throwing stuff on the court, and he, he saw Norm out of the coach's box. Gentlemen, back out to Robertson. Robertson pulls up from eight too hard off the front iron. And Albert White will come away with it. Boy, Kansas missed an opportunity there, Ron. They came away with nothing but missed two technicals. Things, nothing doing. That's a tough shot trying to get it over the seventh footer. Now we've got these mismatches inside again. White and Earl, Thames and Chenoweth. They go directly to Chenoweth who gets knocked down. Chenoweth just not strong enough it seems to play in this game. Missouri really being physical with Chenoweth and he's having a tough time. Parker. I think they're going to get Earl. Yep, Lester Earl gets the foul. Third foul on Lester Earl. Uh, Williams looks like he's wondering over there what the heck is going on. Earl reaches in, very clearly gets Parker. Kansas fortunate that Parker didn't get that one to go. This is the thing that has not only kept Missouri in the ballgame, but has them ahead. They're 11 of 12 from the free throw line tonight. And on the other hand, Kansas only 7 of 13. Missouri, of course, the leading free throw shooting team in the Big 12, Ron. Norm still having a word or two for Tom O'Neill. Well, there's no question that Norm was on the coach's ball. Well, I think it was Lee that got hit across the arm, and the kid was holding his arm, and Norm said, I was going to see about my injured player. Well, that, and O'Neill says, you're out of the box, it's a tee. The coach, if he's going to leave the box to go see to his injured player, he's got to be beckoned by the referee. Five points, Missouri lead. Just over seven to play. Don't go away. Middle of your screen, look at Tom O'Neill, the referee, and he's conversing with somebody at the scorer's table. We'll get the guy's name, but, I mean, he is emphatic. He is really upset about something. And right after that is when and there's Norm you can see Norm he's way out of the coach's box Norm is at the table wanting to know what's going on and Norm he's not allowed to do that you're not allowed to be out of the coach's box and that's what he got the technical foul so in essence he was not looking after the injured player <laughs> and now of course sir these gentlemen are on better terms <laughs> well here's the game summary in the second half KU only five of twenty two. Missouri, 9 of 19, and look at the turnovers. 17 against the Jayhawks. Ron, and interestingly enough, they went into the Missouri training room, and Lee, sitting over there on the bench, has some sort of a brace on his left arm. Thomas for three. Back to a two-point Missouri lead. By the way, the five-point lead, the largest of the night for the Tigers. Kansas back to the man to man. Decker. First two points for him and the fouls on Pew. Decker does a great job moving without the basketball to get position. As this pass goes in, you see no help back there. And because there's no help, Decker has time to wheel to the basket and draw the foul. Foul. The foul is on Robertson. I beg your pardon. It's his third. Foul's on Robertson? 
Well, they just flashed on the board, and we're going to have to. <laughs> I didn't think Robertson was anywhere in the neighborhood. They're having a problem over there at that table. <laughs> and I think Hafer is going to get the foul, and he's telling Grauer, hey, you got to call out that screen. He's Hafer, number 24 in white, is trying to guard Thomas. And Robertson went to set a screen. Grauer needs to help on the screen because Grauer's guarding Robertson, but Hafer trying to catch up with Billy Thomas. To clear up one thing, as I suggested, Pew did get the foul. <laughs> Wrong number blinking. Robertson who missed those two technical free throws gets that one. Robertson now with 18 points. And here comes Kansas with the pressure. They get another turnover. No, Grower, what a nice job to recover, Ron. That's four on Pierce. Ron, you'll recall the last time Kansas went to that pressure, Grower threw it up in the fourth row. That time they very nearly got another turnover, but Grower saves the day here, chases the ball down, and then gets fouled by Pierce. Now look at Lee. He's got a brace on that on that shoulder to keep it from popping out. As Pierce picks up his fourth foul, and Lee checks back into the ball game. And you look at Grower. Grower, pretty good free throw shooter. And there's Pierce. He was so hot in the first half, and then he had to go to bench with the go to the bench with the foul trouble, and he never really got it back. Grower can make it a five-point Missouri lead. Misses on Decker over pick up the back. The foul. That's three on Decker going over the back. Just jumps and the reason he gets the foul, Ron, if he jumps, just jumps straight up in the air, he's okay. But when he drops that arm, he picks up the foul. Lester Earl knocks it home. You remember the game we had against Nebraska. Lester goes to the line, starts to shoot. Everybody starts his motion and then just stops. Everybody goes into the lane. And Roy saying, what? Shoot the basketball. And he said later that he was losing his grip on, on the basketball, just decided he was going to shoot an air ball, and he held it up. And he said, you know, I might have made the ESPYs for next year. <laughs> The next ball game, he went to the free throw line, and Roy said he sat there and stared at him first. And Roy said, I just said, shoot the basketball. Don't look at me. Trap in the backcourt. Nice job. About to go under six minutes left in this one. Missouri with a two point margin over the number three team in the nation. Boy, Earl doing a great job keeping Thames from catching the ball. White, strong to the hoop, got the shot off, back off the backboard, and Grower comes up with it for Mizzou. White tipped it to him. White just didn't give up after missing that shot. Man to man. Fighting for position inside, but Pew doing a nice job. Thames against Pew reverses the shot, doesn't even draw iron on that one. And Brower again comes up with the ball by knocking it off Bradford's leg. And that's one of those situations Roy wants a 20 second timeout. Bradford should have held that ball up and gotten it to a guard. Bradford tries to recover the ball by dribbling it. You never try to recover by dribbling it. You pick it up and wait till the traffic clears. Eighteen turnovers against the Jayhawks. Missouri with the 11. We have five minutes and 20 seconds to play in this one. What a great ball game. You know what we got to do is we got to get those guys in the Big East a new clock. They run over on our games here in the Big 12 every week. White now with 23. That's a career high for him. 
What a big shot. Bradford. Oh. I think it was partially blocked by Harge. Harge did block it. He blocked it without jumping. Ted Hillary asking some of the Missouri players to stand back there almost on the court. Everybody's so excited about this one. And White traveled. White does a nice job against the press, Ron. He gets the ball to the right guy, then steps in position for the three, and he's all alone. He beat the press, stepped into the open spot, buried it. Career high, 23 points. Robertson's been quiet lately. Pierce back in the lineup, takes the 19-footer and uh, knocks it down just inside the three-point line. That's a big time basket right there over the top of Harge. 15 points for him, and it's back to a three point margin. And back to the zone for Kansas. 1 3 1 zone. Just a change to slow the Missouri offense down a little. Oh, boy. Right. Way outside. <laughs> Good heavens. Robertson for three. Monty Harge knocked it out of bounds. Ron, Kansas goes to that zone to force the outside shot, get the rebound. They were successful that time, and this is a good success here for Pierce. Well, if you're Missouri, you better find Pierce. He struggled at times tonight, but he's got 15 points in the game. They flash him into the middle. He rattles home the jumper from 15 feet. As I say, you better find him because Kansas is going to find him. One point ball game. Kansas back to man to man. Nice, nice pass. give and go at fame. They cleared out the area on the back side or the opposite side of the basket where the ball was. Kelly's got a dozen. Most important thing is it keeps the pressure on KU to score with each trip as we're now under three minutes. I think Pierce has gotten their attention, Ron. What do you think? Man to man. He oh my goodness hit the shot and an opportunity to tie this basketball game. Wow. That was a tough tough shot shot clock running down. You got the ball in the hands of your All-American candidate. He gets bumped goes up. And sticks it in the basket. Wow. No upset in the making if he has anything to say about it. We are tied at two minutes and 34 seconds left in the ball game. And Pierce, by himself, really, in the last three and a half minutes, has taken control. He scored the last seven points for Kansas. Baines back to Lee for three points. Oh, big basket. He's got six. But certainly the biggest hoop of this ball game for him. Billy Thomas. <laughs> 16 points for Billy. Wow. Tied again. Now it's 70. Lee. Robertson. Oh, what a great job by Robertson to get the ball out. Gets it back to Pearson. He was fouled on the way to the hoop by White. And that's five fouls on Albert White. Oh, and that is a serious blow for Missouri. Billy Thomas jumps up right in front of the Kansas bench and buries the three. Then White's going to pick up his fifth foul. But the reason this foul occurs is Ryan Robertson gets the ball out into the offensive zone very, very quickly. 
Probably White should have let that one go with four fouls. White leaves with 23 points. Well, now there's a question for Missouri as you go down in the last minute and 39 where you're going to get your offense. Pierce now with 21. Ray LaFrance. 22nd has uh, been time called by Missouri. You think that Rafe LaFrance has wanted to play badly before tonight. How about now? <laughs> Speaking of this this series, let's take a look at last year and the end of the ballgame. Getting down to the end, Kansas very nearly comes up with it. This is in the second overtime. That's Corey Tate who hits it, a two-point lead for Missouri. And then Rafe LaFrance, one last chance for Kansas. Missouri wins in double overtime. So as we mentioned, the Tigers have won three of the last four here at the Hearn Center. And every time KU has been ranked at least number three, last year they were ranked number one. They were 22 and 0. And for Norm Stewart, his concern's got to be that Paul Pierce has simply put the Jayhawks on his back and he's carrying him down the stretch. Pierce scores it and puts him in front by a couple. Kansas in the man to man. See if they try to find harder themes inside. Lee against Robertson wouldn't go for the ball fake. Well, he came close to the five count, didn't he? Paper. Stumbled a moment. Billy Thomas kind of gave up on him and then he came back up and scored. Man to man looking for a stop. Pierce, he was fouled by Lee. Ron, there's absolutely no secret about what Kansas is trying to do. It's a very tough assignment for Lee. Pierce, very aggressive with the ball, does a nice job getting some space so he can get the jump shot off. Clearly, he's hit on the wrist. Seventy two percent free throw shooter. Missed it. One point ball game. Seventy three seventy two under a minute to play with the number three team of the nation fall. The Tigers are in position. Twenty three now twenty two on the shot clock. Lee. Can't get it, and Chenoweth gets the rebound and quickly back to Robertson. Shot clock is off. And Chenoweth is fouled as Grauer commits the foul. He comes over immediately and says, was not doing it vindictively. 60% is the free throw percentage for the big fella coming up. Sports Center with Kenny Mayne and Gary Miller. Duncan against Van Horn. Super Bowl hype and Aussie Open. In fact, there was an upset down there today as Williams won over Sparlea. He was the number six seed on the women's side of the draw. Boy, Ron, and the blood rule has suddenly raised its head here and adversely for Missouri. Brian Grauer, in committing that foul, banged his head up against Chenoweth and he's bleeding and by rule he has to go out of the game until the blood stops and you can see how disgusted he is. Got to find a band aid over there quickly. They want to have that young man in the game. So it's a one point game. Twenty four point two seconds left. Billy Thomas telling Chenoweth that's OK let's get the second one here. Now you got to block out have to block out if you're Missouri. He missed them both. Kafer recovers it and the Tigers with an opportunity to win on this possession or go in front.
Robertson with a holding foul with 11.4 seconds. That was an extremely dangerous pass. Hafer was just, he felt the five second count coming. He almost had another one, you're right. He threw the ball up and you got to give Lee a great deal of credit. Hafer's in trouble here, he throws up Lee. Watch Lee just go get the ball. Really bailed his teammate out right there. Nice play by Lee, now he's going to get a chance to go to the line. 11.4 seconds left, we'll be back with the conclusion after this. Lee picks up the foul, Robertson fouls him, so with a one-point lead for Kansas, Missouri now goes to the line, and Lee is fiddling with that brace. He is 13 of 14 from the free throw line in the last four minutes of their games this year, but he has to go in a critical time. 79% free throw shooter overall for the season. We're tied at 73. Now, of course, on, in the Kansas bench, they had an opportunity to set up what they wanted to, to do. Expect them to get down the court. Got them both. Norm Stewart calls a timeout. Missouri with a one-point lead. Missouri 74, Kansas 73, and Dan, who does KU look to as they come down in this possession? Well, I think if you're Kansas, you're going to look to Pierce, and I think if I'm Missouri, I'm going to make somebody besides Pierce beat me, although keep in mind, Robertson has had an outstanding game, as had Billy Thomas. Kansas has a lot of weapons, and so Missouri's got a lot to cover, but I think you make somebody besides Paul Pierce beat you. Under 10 seconds to play and a timeout called by Kansas. Seven and a half seconds as Robertson got it across the timeline. And we're going to hold it right here. That's a situation where Kansas has the luxury of some timeouts and it appeared that their intention all along was to get the ball to half court and call the timeout to set up something at the half court level as opposed to trying to do it on a full court basis. Many times in that situation, team will see what develops but Kansas appeared like as they were going to call that timeout immediately. Well the young man helps us with our job uh, sports center coming up <laughs> next here on ESPN as you look at the, the timeouts KU still has a 20 second and Missouri has a full timeout remaining. Well now you have a little bit more leeway if you're Roy Williams you can and coaches always have plays at the end of the game for these precise kind of situations. But you can set some screens and try to get some people open. And again, they have a couple of weapons. You'd like to work, say, a two-man game with Pearson and, and Thomas. In a situation like this, you may have a screen, and the guy who they're trying to get the ball to is the screener, not the guy they're screening for. And if you're Missouri, keep in mind that oftentimes in this situation, it's not the shot that beats you, but it's the offensive rebound after the shot. So you play good defense, you don't foul, and you make sure you block out. Right here in front of us, Paul Pierce will pull the trigger. Pierce is the man, gets hit, runs into hard, and Missouri wins it. about Paul Pierce and he's going to get the basketball but as he comes around he gets open on the screen he comes around he's going to run into hard he loses the ball Chenoweth goes to the basket they don't see it watch Chenoweth he's open under the basket but Pierce doesn't see him the ball is stripped away by Woods and Missouri wins 
So the Missouri Tigers go to 10 and 7. They are 3 and 3 in conference play, but most importantly, they have won four of the last five here at the Hearn Center against the Kansas Jayhawks. Roy Williams Club five falls to 21 and 3. Our final score Missouri 74 and KU 73.